There were thousands of different types of armor in the medieval times to defend against every conceivable threat. The technology and ingenuity that they incorporated into armor design is astonishing. Here are the top 15 most incredible types of medieval armor. Number 15. Polished Winged Hussar Armor the Polished Winged Hussars were the elite cavalry units of Poland between the 16th and 18th centuries. The first were based on the Hungarian Hussars and were made up of Serbian warriors who had defected to the country and were originally seen as the most expendable troops of the armed forces. This began to change, though, as they proved their worth on the battlefield, and by the 1570s they were regarded as the pinnacle of the Polish cavalry. It was at this time that their armor took on its unique appearance and would strike fear into any enemy they encountered. Their main weapon was a copia lance that had a point made from forged steel. These were usually up to 20 feet long and used in conjunction with a small broadsword called a palaz. They wore a decorated helmet with replica skull pieces on it, a breastplate and iron gauntlets beneath a padded coat of mail, and of course, their huge wings which were made from a wooden frame and were adorned with feathers from eagles, ostriches, swans, or geese. Quite how this tradition came about isn't certain, but it's thought that most likely their wings would have made such loud noises that they spooked enemy horses. They may have also provided some protection against swords to the back and prevented them from being thrown from their horses, which was a preferred technique of the Tatar riders that they often fought against. Number 4. Indian War Elephant Armor Animals have been long used to help transport forces and even to engage in battle themselves. And while horses have been the most common throughout history, the most fearsome of all were war elephants. Various armies have used them in wartime, but the pinnacle came during medieval times in the Indian subcontinent, where they were clad in armor and would have been an almighty force to contend with. Almost like the battle tanks of their time, their armor became increasingly strong and ornate. Some designs involved 8,500 individual plates that combined would weigh as much as 350 pounds and were covered in inscriptions and depictions of people, gods, and other animals. They were designed to protect the elephant's head and upper body, as these areas were most often targeted by enemies, but their armor was also used to turn them into deadly killing machines. War elephants usually had their tusks partially sawn off, and they have in their place a pair of crescent-shaped tusk swords. These would also sometimes be covered in poison, so when the elephant charged through enemy troops, it would cause carnage wherever it went. Some armies reported having as many as 6,000 war elephants at a time, and it truly would have been a sight to behold. Number 13. Samurai Oyoroi First used in the 10th century, the Oyoroi is a type of armor that was worn by the samurai classes in feudal Japan. It became increasingly popular and was the most common type of armor worn by them during the 12th century, especially during the Genpei Civil War in the latter part of that century. It was made up of the Heno Rokugo, which means the six articles of the arms. These were the Do, or the cuirass, the Kabuto, which was the helmet, the Menpo, which means the mask, the armored sleeves known as the Kote, the Sunate, which refers to the greaves, and the Haidate, or the Quisses. The main body of the armor was made up of plates and scales that were laced together and then covered in lacquer to increase the overall durability. They would also wear large shoulder guards called the osode, a specialized sleeve to assist with using a bow, and a customized face covering called a mengu. Most of the oyoroi was made up of iron, but because of its weight, it was used only to cover vulnerable parts of the body, and leather was used for the rest. Still, the full set of armor weighed approximately 65 pounds, so added significant weight and required practice to remain agile when fighting. As it was made so meticulously, it could take the better part of a year to make just one set, and it would cost a huge amount for a samurai to purchase, meaning only the most affluent were ever able to afford one. Number 12. Aztec Jaguar Warrior Armor The Aztec Empire had a number of different classes of fighters amongst their ranks, but the most elite of them all were known as the Cuajo Celoto, or what are now referred to as the Jaguar Warriors. It was the Aztec belief that the Jaguar, which was the most deadly cat in South America, represented the most important god, Tezcatlipoca, and by that adorning themselves with Jaguar motifs, they'd be imbued with the strength of their god and of the ferocious predators. The Jaguar Warriors would lead the troops into battle in full Jaguar attire, and it was their responsibility to capture enemy fighters for sacrifice. While they didn't wear armor that would particularly protect them from injury, 
they would have been a fearsome sight on the battlefield, and as the most ruthless and capable of fighters, were deadly when armed with wooden clubs that were studded with pieces of glass or spears. Not just anyone could become a jaguar warrior, though, and there were tough criteria for recruitment. It was seen as improper to kill an enemy during battle, and much more preferable to capture them for sacrifice. So to become a jaguar warrior, you had to capture at least four enemy combatants, as well as completing several other difficult tasks. They were considered to be the noble classes of society and were full-time soldiers. When not in battle, they acted as a police force in Aztec cities and were heavily involved in the rituals of gladiatorial sacrifice. Number 11. Mongol Kashyyyk Armor Life in the Mongolian Empire was particularly cutthroat. It wasn't unusual for a leader or any member of society to be killed by their competitors, and considering they often slept in tents without any significant fortification, murdering a king could be as simple as just thrusting your sword through a piece of fabric. By the time Genghis Khan was in control, especially after his father had been poisoned, he established a personal guard called the Kashyyyk, which means the blessed. These were trusted allies that swore their allegiance to the leader, put their lives on the line to keep him safe. To begin with, there were only 70 on duty during the day and 80 on duty at night, and to be able to do their job effectively, they were given the toughest armor that could be produced. It usually consisted of a helmet made of large metal pieces, which included a neck protector and a piece of main body armor made up of hundreds of small metal pieces that were bound together. Their horses too wore armor, and possibly the cleverest addition was that the soldiers wore silk shirts beneath the metal. While this may seem like it was for comfort, there was a far better reason for it. Most injury caused by arrows that pierce armor is from the need to pull arrowheads out of the skin, but silk would wrap around them and prevent them from puncturing it through in the first place. Silk also has antimicrobial properties, and while the Mongols certainly didn't have an understanding of microbiology, they had enough experience on the battlefield to have learned that injuries and complications were less severe when wearing silk. We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 10. Siculo Norman Knight Armor The first Norman fighters began entering Italian territory in the early 11th century and began taking territory away from the Eastern Roman Empire. Led by Robert Guiscard, towns across Italy began falling to the Normans over the following three decades culminated with them taking over the island of Sicily. A momentous occasion in Europe because it saw the island fall back under Christian control after 150 years of being ruled by Arabian forces. In establishing their position, however, the Siculo Norman troops learned from the Arab traditions and incorporated elements of their design within their own armor. The attire that they wore typically included a gilded helmet with a face mask, a male coif, and the feet of their male chos were enclosed within iron scales something that shows craftsmanship way ahead of its time. From these foundations, which were built on a combination of knowledge from a number of different empires, the Normans built a large army, most of which were cavalry, and would go on to become one of the most powerful forces of time. With ships built in Lower Italy from the know-how that had been developed over the previous thousand years, the Normans would go on to take control of vast swaths of Europe, and their lasting influence can still be seen to this day. Number 9. Kuir Buili If you were to choose the type of armor you wore in battle, you most likely would have wanted metal plating, but this came at a premium, and very few soldiers could actually afford it. There were alternatives, however, and while they weren't anywhere near as effective, they were substantially better than not wearing any protective clothing at all. One of the most surprising materials that was commonly used as armor was Kuir Buili, which literally translates to mean boiled leather. While it may sound like a terrible form of protection, this leather was much tougher than you're familiar with the types used to make shoes, though. During the boiling process, it was mixed with additives to make it stronger, and by adding strips of metal, particularly on the helmet, it could be strong enough to withstand a slash from a sword. Modern tests have also found that Kuir Buili has significantly reduced the depth an arrow could reach, and this made the difference between life and death. Kuir Buili was used many thousands of years ago, until as recently as the 16th or 17th centuries, the main reason was simply because of the low cost of producing it, but there were other advantages that it offered that metal simply could not. During the siege of Jerusalem in 70 AD and the Spanish expedition of Tristan de Luna in 1559, for example, soldiers found themselves so hungry and with little options for nutrition that they had to resort to eating their shields and other pieces of leather equipment to survive. Number 8. 
full plate armor. When you think of medieval armor, the first thing you imagine is probably the suits that you see on display in castles or museums. This is full plate armor, and while early designs were seen as far back as the early Roman times, they really came into their own during the Hundred Years' War that began in the 14th century. The full suit would have been made up of a helmet, the gorget, which covers the neck, spalders and pauldrons over the shoulders, rebraces for the upper arms, couteres on the elbows, vambraces on the forearms, gauntlets on the hand, and a cuirass over the torso. Similarly, there were individually designed pieces that covered each joint and section of the waist, the hips, the legs, and the feet. A full set of plate armor was an incredibly complicated thing to produce and required skilled craftsmanship at every step. In fact, many forgers would specialize in just one piece, and it would take the combined efforts of a number of them to produce an entire suit. The protection provided by them was second to none, though, and by the 15th and 16th centuries, they formed the central part of every major army. In some cases, there would be as many as 10,000 men wearing full plate armor, surrounded by archers and crossbowmen, and this led to new battlefield techniques and the demand for new weaponry. They were virtually invulnerable to sword slashes, spears, pikes, and arrows, but there were weak points at the joints. These could be exploited by long swords and pole axes, and maces could be used to inflict blunt force trauma through the armor. In many ways, this armor was the most significant development in medieval warfare, because it completely changed the face of both defensive and offensive techniques. Number 7. Sassanid Savaron Armor The Sassanid Empire was officially known as the Empire of Iranians and was the last of the imperial Persian dynasties before Islam arrived in the region in 7th century. It was a dangerous time that required a strong military to protect the vast lands, and at the core of their military were the Savarans, an elite cavalry force. They were made up of swordsmen, archers, armored cavalrymen, and because they were the ones who charged into the heat of battle, they had to be adequately protected against enemy weaponry. To this extent, the Sovereigns wore a scale armor cuirass to protect their torsos, which also had long sleeves and scale armored chaps. They had spangle helm type helmets, which were common throughout Europe at the time, and it's believed that they covered their heads and upper bodies of their horses with armor too, so they weren't targeted as the weak point of the soldier. Depending on their role, their armor would have differed slightly. Some would be more heavily armored so they could punch holes through enemy defenses, while others would wear less so they were more agile and could more easily engage in combat. By the fall of the Empire, the Savarans were wearing full chainmail coats that reached all the way down to the knees and paved the way for the armor designs of the next few centuries, as typified by the knights in Europe. Number 6. Eastern Roman Cataphract the Eastern Roman Empire, more commonly known as the Byzantine Empire, was all that remained of the Romans after the Western Empire fell. Based around their capital city of Constantinople, it outlasted the Western Romans by a thousand years and only fell at the hands of the Ottoman Empire in 1453. Based upon traditional Roman designs and tactics, but developing with the times, they developed their own cataphracts, which were a type of cavalry unit that was completely covered in armor. They had taken the idea from armies they had encountered from the east, but put their own spin on the design. They were renowned for their superior heavy armor that was made up of a leather undercoat, upon which pieces of metals were meticulously sewn. This was called a klibanyan, and was worn over a chainmail corslet to create a composite armor covering. Further pieces were added to protect the exposed parts of the body that weren't protected by this main piece of armor, and the cataphracts became known as being virtually impossible to stop. To complete things, their horses were also covered in a similar type of armor, and while this made them much slower than other cavalry units, when they arrived, they would instantly take command of the battlefield, especially as they were armed with heavy weaponry like maces and broadswords. Number 5. Persian Immortal Armor The Persian Immortals were one of the most feared armies in history, belonging to the First Persian Empire, which was also known as the Achaemenid Empire. They were an elite infantry unit that was heavily armed and made up of Persians, Medes, and Elamites. Led by Hydernes II, it was stipulated that there should be exactly 10,000 immortals, so whenever any were killed during battle, the losses were immediately replaced with new fighters. This meant the leaders had a powerful force at their disposal at all times, but as the men were from noble backgrounds, efforts were made to protect them as much as possible. They wore a soft felt cap, an embroidered tunic, and a coat of metal that was described as looking like the scales of a fish, 
They carried wicker shields, short spears, and were mostly known for their ability with a bow. Although when they entered hand-to-hand -hand combat, they also had short swords that were kept on their belts. This may not sound like it provided a huge amount of protection, but when they were active around 2,500 years ago, they would have been plenty enough to allow them to be deadly on the battlefield. Number 4. German Landsknecht Dress Possibly the most unusual and definitely the most colorful armor from medieval times was the Landsknecht Dress that was worn by German fighters during the late 15th century. The name translates to mean Servant of the Country, and these flamboyant soldiers were far more dangerous than their attire would have you believe. It's thought that they modeled themselves after the Swiss Guard, and recruits were the most vicious and dangerous soldiers of fortune available. They didn't actually wear much armor and were known for their colorful outfits, but on top of these they would wear basic breastplates, thigh guards, and steel-plated skullcaps. Their main focus was on offensive weaponry, and the idea was that they'd take on their enemies in such a blaze of aggression that they'd rarely be struck back. They were armed with pikes, halberds, two-handed swords called Zweihanda, and later on arquebus pistols, crossbows, and S-shaped swords. Their attire was intended to flaunt their privilege as much as it was to protect them, and they soon became renowned as one of the last forces you'd ever want to encounter on the battlefield. Number 3. The Horse Trapper While huge efforts went into the development of armor for soldiers, attention was also paid to looking after the animals that were used in combat. Horses have, for thousands of years, been an important part of warfare, and this led to the creation of trappers, which were sets of armor to protect them from being targeted. Those steeds that belonged to wealthy fighters were specifically bred for battle and were incredibly expensive themselves, so it's hardly a surprise that they were often covered in better armor than many of the soldiers that were fighting alongside them. While many wore cloth coverings for basic protection, the most valued horses would wear trappers, which were essentially full suits of chainmail and a metal champron on their heads. Towards the end of the Middle Ages, some even had full plate armor suits designed for them, and this protected them against virtually anything the enemy could throw at them. Number 2. Chainmail Hauberk During the Middle Ages, all of the elite fighters would wear armor made from metal, and this would afford them a far greater level of protection than what was on offer to other soldiers. The first suits like this were known as Chainmail Hauberk. These covered the entire torso and ended in a split skirt that protected the upper legs. They were made from interlinked rings of metal that were tight enough to protect against swords and arrows, but had enough flexibility that they'd allow movement. They also helped spread the impact of heavy strikes across a wider part of the body, and therefore reduced the likeliness of focused injuries. Most had widened sleeves to protect the arms, but allowed the wearer to effectively wield a sword. And they wore a coif, which was a chainmail hood, along with a solid metal helmet to add extra protection. Chainmail, of course, weighed a lot more than other armors made from leather or cloth, but didn't restrict movement too much. And as long as the wearer was fit and had practiced combat techniques while wearing it, wouldn't have affected the way they fought. Making chainmail is an extremely laborious and time-consuming task, though, which is why it proved to be so expensive. It gave wealthy fighters a step up on the battlefield and meant that they had a far better chance of surviving the battle, as well as being visibly different from others in a fight so everyone knew that they were from a higher class than them. Number 1. Roman Lorica Segmentata Possibly the most famous armor from history, and one that was used as late as the 4th century AD, was the Roman Lorica Segmentata. It was because of this design that the Roman Empire became so powerful and feared, and opposing armies often had no way of countering its heavy protection and flexibility. It was made up of strips of metal that were arranged horizontally and overlapping each other. There were two halves that enclosed the torso that were fastened at the front and back, and then soldiers would wear shoulder guards and back and breastplates on top of them to offer full protection. They wore a tunic underneath their armor, a baltia, which creates a series of straps that dangle down from the front to add some protection to important areas, and a metal helmet. Surprisingly, little attention was given to protecting the legs, which were usually bare, and they only wore sandals on their feet. What this meant, however, was that they weren't weighed down with cumbersome armor, but their vital organs were protected, so while they may have been injured during battle, there was a significantly reduced chance of them being killed. This was important since most Roman soldiers were recruited from citizens of the Empire, and they wouldn't have signed up if they thought they were being subjected to an unnecessary level of risk. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.